in the name of Allah, the most beneficent and the most merciful. For me, I always had that, I always felt that connection with God and within the Trinity, I felt, looking back, I think my connection was with the Father. Like, you know, you want to go to the highest guy of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you go to the the highest up figure. So I always had that connection. And you know, my favorite part of church always was coming back after communion and you pray and, and you say like, bless my mommy and my doggy and everything. So I always feel like I always had that spiritual connection. So when my family left the Catholic church after the um, scandal with the Catholic priests and the boys um, and a friend in high school introduced me to Islam. Um, and I had just entered my freshman year of, in, of college in Virginia. I actually was invited by some friends that I met in the MSA. I was a non-Muslim, but they took me to, um, it, was, it was Ramadan, and everyone was fasting, and they took me at night to the masjid for um, Laylatul Qadr. And I had never been in a masjid before, and walking in, I could feel the power of that night, and the, I went in the kind of dark room, and everyone's praying, and everyone's crying. Well, not everyone, but a lot of people are crying. And, um, and I didn't know what was going on, and I, I walked in, and some lady pulled my arm and pulled me in line, um, so I was kind of just like, okay, and then I, we hear something again and again, Allahu Akbar, and I would do the next thing. But that night and that feeling definitely stood out to me, and that kind of pushed me to take the next step to further my own education for myself about Islam. I always tell people there was kind of two turning points. There was the Layla Qadr, which was like me feeling really that spiritual connection, and then there was my education. Imam Zaid Shakir's Back to Basics Islam 101 DVD set, it goes through everything. It talks about the pillars, the um, articles of faith, and it addresses things that often make non-Muslims shy away from Islam, like what's the deal with Osama bin Laden, what's the deal with the Taliban, all those issues. And he addresses them, and he's just, the way he talks, mashallah, he's a great speaker. And so you can tell he's so at peace with his life and his creator. So that really educated me on everything, and that was definitely the, that was what pushed me to say, okay, I, I am a Muslim, I need to t do the next step and say the shahada. So I, I did that at the masjid. Alhamdulillah, um, I'm not one of those stories where my parents wanted to, take me out. My parents, um, they saw that I was happy in high school, not so happy, kind of, not really. So when they saw that I was actually finding finding something that made me happy, of course they they want that for me. Not, my parents weren't that <coughs> happy about the hijab. They didn't want me to wear the hijab, but they, they've gotten used to it. Alhamdulillah, I didn't think that would happen, but just, I just graduated from college and I'm home and they don't really make any more comments. It's kind of just they've accepted it, so alhamdulillah. And um, my, my mother and I are very close, and she actually has started um, buying me hijab, so alhamdulillah. Like I said, um, this, the nights, not only Laylatul Qadr, but all of the nights after fasting when everyone goes to the masjid, and you can just feel that power of the night of praying tarawih, um, that's the most special part of Ramadan for me as well as the discipline in the day that I never realized I was so not disciplined. You really don't realize how much you take food and water for granted until you, every time you go to, to get some, you, you're, you realize you can't. So that discipline I feel is very important for everyone. And I would just love to be able to sit down and really talk from my heart about how happy I am and I know everyone whether they say they they don't whether they say oh there's no God I don't care I'm, if I die that's it you have those questions and it doesn't I think everyone has those questions of what happens when I die I know there must be something else going on and for me to find that peace I, I would love to give that to them through Islam what I what I found for myself is that we really have no, we think we have control and things are going good, but when, as soon as something goes bad, that's when people say like, oh my God, or they, they cry out to God. And that moment of realizing that God is the one in control, I think that's such a humbling, that humbling effect is what, um, is what can really change people's lives and lead them to realizing that 
God is in control. There is one God. 